Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Dan Brooks, who's the founder of Zexus Private Wealth, and we'll be talking about his ease planning process. Dan, welcome to the program. Mike, how are you? Good to be here. Doing great. And I'm excited to talk to you about this planning process because I love when someone has come up with a system and a proven framework. And I love acronyms. So the ease planning process. But before we dive into that, give us a little bit of your story and background and how did you get into financial services? Well, um, Mike, that's an interesting question uh, because I didn't intend on getting into this business. Um, I was actually in the restaurant business years ago, owned a couple (laughs) of restaurants and thought I was going to spend my career there. And something happened in my family uh, that uh, changed us all, and it and it actually th- kind of thrust me into this business. So it's a little bit of an interesting story that I'll that I'll shorten it uh, as much as I can. My dad was a was a prisoner of war, and when he got back, he went to college and got into the business world. And he was highly successful. He was very, very, very smart and did well. So when I was young, growing up, you know, it was a pretty good life. We had the big house and the up in the hill overlooking the river and the and the boats and t- taking vacations. We lived in the Midwest and we'd vacation in Florida in the winter. And then um, one day it kind of all changed. And, uh, you know, the big house got sold. We moved into a rental. Uh, my mom went to work for the first time that, uh, you know, in my life. So mm-hmm. it was uh, it was pretty dramatic. And, you know, you're, at that age, your parents don't really tell you what's going on. So I didn't yeah. know. I just had to live through it. And I didn't really find out, Mike, until, you know, many years later, when my dad passed away, because going back to that tough time, you know, his health started to deteriorate after that. And he, he was never really healthy afterwards. But when he when he passed away, my mom called me over and she said, I need some financial help. And I wasn't an advisor. I was in the restaurant business. But your mom asked, and of course, you're going to help her. Yeah. And I, I said, what's going on? And she said, well, your, your dad wasn't able to leave me very much. And uh, to this day, I remember the look on her face and I remember the feeling in that room. And that's when she kind of told me the story of what had happened that, you know, when he was very successful, he was prudent with his money. He'd saved a lot of money, intended to pay for college for his five kids and was only able to do it for one. Uh, So the story was that, that he really got some awful advice from a person in the financial services business, my business now. In that case, it was a stockbroker. And the story is not a diatribe against stockbrokers. You know, we, we manage, you know, our group manages billions of dollars. So I'm certainly not against the stock market, Mm -hmm. but, but this was just really awful advice that he got Yeah, with the market going down two years in a row. He lost a bunch of money the first year. The broker said, well, look, the market always comes back. It always has, always will, you know, it'll bounce back next year. Don't worry about it, Mr. Brooks. What we need to do is take what you have left, which is substantial and, you know, really, you know, take even more risk because when we do that, you know, we're, we'll bounce you back to where you should be. Buying cheap money. Yeah, right. And that was the idea. And of course, the market mm-hmm. went down two years in a row and really kind of wiped him out. I think it affected his health. I think it shortened his life. And uh, about a year and a half after he passed away, I decided to get in this business because I was kind of mad at the financial industry and wanted to find out what in the world happened. So yeah. I didn't want it to happen to me. You know, I didn't want it to happen to people I knew. And I thought, I'll get in there and figure out you know, how this can happen to people. And I thought it might take a year. Of, of working in industry and and it actually took longer. And before long, I found out I was kind of in the industry. And that's when I started forming this idea for the ease planning process, because I, I found that there's so much uh, confusion. The public has so much confusion about the financial world. And they, they really just need to have, you know, clear and honest answers because people are smart. If they get, if they get accurate information about how anything works, they're smart enough to make their own decisions. And I, you know, that's how we develop this EASE planning process. You know, I love that you entered in the industry after almost like having a uh, realization that the industry did wrong by your dad, your family. So you wanted to help out, fix that, prevent other people. I'll bet you didn't come up with the EASE planning process day one. You know, you no, have to come no. in and go, let me learn 
the, the ropes. Let me, you know, work in this a little bit. And then, oh, let me, let me take note of this here. This is kind of an interesting aspect. And, you know, let me make sure that this, uh, this would fit with this piece. And it just slowly developed over time. So at, at first, when you started in the industry, um, what was that foundation like for you? And, and I want to dive into what the ease planning process is, but, but what was that foundation? And then what did, what did you then, what emerged as your specialty based on that foundation? Well, that's a that's a excellent question because you're right. Um, and I, in fact, intentionally moved from large financial company to, to large financial company. And if I named them, you'd know all of them. Mm-hmm. But I did intentionally because I wanted to learn what each of them are doing and you know the different sides of the business. You know, there's the investment side, there's the insurance side, there's the planning side. So I really wanted to you know dive into that. I did all of the training that I could do. I completed the certified financial planning coursework and, and, you know, hundreds of hours of other training to really, you know, kind of peel back the curtain of what was going on in the industry. So as you said, bit by bit, I put this ease planning process together and it really came about from our clients who were telling us at the end of the process that we're using, which we didn't have a name for, yeah. um, they just kept saying, Dan, you know, thank you so much. I feel so much at ease now. You know, when we when wow. we first met you, we were kind of confused. We had all these questions and we weren't getting answers to it. Everybody we talked to was just trying to sell us something. And, you know, sometimes we bought stuff and sometimes we didn't buy things, but we always wondered whether it was the right thing. And, you know, we really appreciate you laying this all out for us. So that's when we it actually one of my one of my employees said, When, you know, Dan, we we ought to call that ease. Yeah. Neat. So we did. Yeah. And and so so what does the E A S E stand for? Well, the first E is educate because I believe very strongly that you know mm-hmm. w- you know our our specialty is is we help people plan for retirement and this is this is their you know what we call golden years. This is a big deal. You know you got you need to get this right because this is the next 25, 30, 40 years of somebody's life. And if you make a big mistake in retirement planning, it can be devastating. You know it's. It's not like you bought a car and the car dealer charged you six thousand dollars more than you should have paid. Um, while that doesn't feel good, it's not going to change your life. Yeah, um, much. You make a big mistake in retirement planning, and and it can and it can it's totally derail you. So if we start with education, because people need the education and they need to be able to count on it, and that puts them in a position to do the second one of the E's A, which is analyze and analyzes analyzing their options, because once you understand what your options are, you can analyze them. And we're really helping our clients put their own plan together. Even though I'm a financial planner, it's their plan that I'm just guiding them. I'm just helping them, you know, get their questions answered and give them honest um, answers to those. And then the third part, the the S is strategize. Because once you understand and you've analyzed your options, now you can put a strategy together and you can use, you know, what what we call the five aisles of money uh, and the final part of the ease is enjoy because that is really the goal in retirement is enjoy it. Don't be worrying all the time about, you know, whether your money's going to last or, uh, you know, what, what dangers are down the road that you haven't thought about. It's really a time for people to enjoy their lives. You know, I've heard it said that people like to buy, but they don't like to be sold. And I think that what you just laid out is this process of let's teach and educate, be their advocate, lay out some options based on what we've learned from you. So here's some things to consider. And then they feel like they're part of the process and they're understanding it. And then I like that you have analyzed before the strategy because you can't just come in day one and say, here's the strategy. Well, I barely know your last name. I don't know your goals. We didn't assess it and analyze it to see if it makes some sense. And now you're talking about running full speed ahead and putting the strategy into action, you know, and then the end result should be that enjoy. So I, I really, really like that. Um, it, and I've read a book uh, uh, too, where I'm a, a big quote guy, but th- this book was talking about when you confuse, you lose. And you just kept hearing over and over, you know, boy, it just puts us at ease. So you certainly have a clear clarity approach to your process. So I think that is huge. And you mentioned um, you help people plan for retirement when you're first meeting with clients. What are some of the problems that they're facing? And I know that, you know, anyone would normally say, oh, the problem is I want to, you know, have more money. But I think when people come to you, they're at different stages. Like I've got 20 years before retirement, I've got five years before retirement. So some are still in accumulation phase, some are wanting to preserve, but what is typically the issues and problems that you're finding that your clients are having facing retirement? 
Well, if I had to say one thing, it was, would be that they're just confused about all of the flood of information that they have access to, that they get conflicting opinions about products and services and, and what to do and what not to do. And, you know, they, they talk to one one so-called advisor, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but most people in my industry are not advisors. They're they're in the business of selling something. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I hear from people and have for, for the decades that I've been doing this is that they don't feel like they can get clear answers. And then, you know, today we've got the internet, which is, you know, <laughs> gigantic. And the, yeah. the problem with that is if you search on financial topics on Google, the sites that pop up, people don't even realize they are there from the large financial institutions. And they're kind of disguised as if they're going to give you um, answers. But at some point, you know, you're you're drilling down into this uh, splash page that you discovered. And eventually they ask for your information so that you can get their free report with the answers to the questions that brought you there in the beginning. And you turn out to be just a lead for some financial person. And it just again is just a sales process. So, a lot of the people we talk to realize that that's happening to them, and some of them just know that they're feeling that. And what they really want is just honest answers to their questions, because again, they're smart, and if they if they know how things really work, they can put their own plan together with me as a guide. Yeah, because the the guide should be there to say, okay, so I've laid it all out. Um, what do you think about this idea for strategy? And then they're comprehending it enough to know, okay, but how would it work if, and then you're going, okay, good question. Here's how that would work. And so now you're arm in arm locked together going, okay, now let's talk through these things. You're not saying, oh, don't worry about that. You need to do it this way. You're guiding them. I think that's spectacular. And again, even if you don't feel like you're a money person or a retirement planning person as a, as a client, you still can comprehend what's being laid out for you. There is still that's, things that right. can make sense. And that gut feel can be like, yeah. oh man, Dan, that just, that just doesn't seem right. So help help me understand. And you either respond and go, oh, well, it's this way. And they're like, oh, got it, got it, got it. Or yeah, I understand, but I still don't feel like, okay, good. Then let's look at option B because we don't want you to feel uncomfortable. So I think that is a huge piece is when people feel like you've got their back, you're transparent, authentic, and you don't have an agenda. You know, because it's so many times um, that people are like saying certain things to just kind of whip out this last piece and go, here's the thing. But you're just an open book going, let's just make sure that you get what you need in retirement. Yeah, that's right. And give them, give them as much of what they want in retirement and avoid all of the things they don't want as much as you can. And there's going to be times that you say, oh, hold up, we, we have to consider something here. This might be a hard topic to cover, but we can't do it this way because. Or if you do this, then here's what's going to happen because you know the system. You know, you know, at a certain age, you have you're required to take minimum distributions out of this account, and if you miss it, you're gonna you're gonna hit a penalty. So we we need to make sure we put this, and it might not be a fun conversation per se, but it's it's necessary. So that's part of the guide is being able to communicate that with empathy. That's right. That's right. So you mentioned in your ease planning process, there is something called aisles. Tell me about how aisles work. Well, the aisles are kind of a concept that we use because the the financial industry is so gigantic and confusing to people that we we broke it down into what we call the five aisles of of money where you can put money in retirement. And the visual of that is if you think about an aisle at a like at a one of the big box stores in Home Depot for example, each aisle has different products in it. And the financial uh, analogy that I use is that there there are five aisles of financial products that all are, are available to all of us. And we need those. We absolutely need mm -hmm. those products, um, just like you need the tools at, at Home Depot. But if you go down an aisle at Home Depot, it might be the hardware aisle with a whole bunch of hammers and a whole bunch of screwdrivers and so on. And they're all for different, slightly different uses. But like the hammers are all designed to do a job, which is pounding a nail. But it depends on how many nails you want to pound and how big are they and how often you're going to do it. But they're all just tools and the financial products are the same way. There's five aisles of financial products and each of those aisles does its job better than the other four. So mm. for example, in aisle one, 
there's a bunch of financial products and they're designed to do one thing. Now they can do other things, but they do one thing better than the other four aisles. And the first thing that people learn with us is that every financial product has a positive and negative about it. You know, there's, there's nothing that doesn't in the, in the world and you should never put all your money in one aisle, even though some people do. Mm-hmm. But what we, what we show them is that the negative of one aisle can be offset by the positive of another aisle. And when it's really using those financial products that, that exist in all five of those aisles in their best way, let the product do its job that it does better than the other aisles. And then if, for the other parts of the job in your, in your plan, you go to the other aisles because it, those aisles do their job better than the others. And am I correct in thinking that client A, B, and C might have a plan and a strategy that would be aisle three, two, one, and five, and then the next client might be one, four, five, and three. So it, the aisles right. are That's are right. not you know set in stone. It's just, oh, based on the fact that you guys need, let's go ahead and look down this aisle first, and then we're going to couple it with that aisle. So it it seems to me like you're the kind of the the guide looking through the potential negatives, but then offsetting it with this. But everyone's going to have a different plan because everyone needs different things. Yeah, that's exactly right. That you know, usually uh, a client is not going to use all five aisles. Some of them do, but mm-hmm. the the point is that it's their choice. Once they understand how the aisles work and how they interact with each other they're perfectly capable of putting their own plan together with me guiding them. You know, I'm not, so I'm, not, what a are the I'm five not a planner. Aisle that, categories. Pardon me. What are the five aisle categories? That's kind of beyond the scope of this time that we have here, but uh, you know, as they go through our process, that's what we, you know, we unfold for them and each, each client uh, takes a different amount of time, which is totally up to them. You know, some, some people, if they have a very simple, um, uh, financial life, we can we can do it in two or three meetings. And there's other people; it might take 15 meetings to mm-hmm. to thoroughly do it. And and the thing is that it's entirely up to the client. I will stay with them until they go. Okay, Dan, thank you. I got it. I got it. I got it. I understand now. And then at, yeah, and I think point, part of that clarity might be interesting when you say, and you know what, aisle four and five, I don't think you're ever going to need because. And they would would at that point go, yep, you're exactly right. So let's focus on aisles one, two, and three and how we can properly align those together. So I think it's just so neat and refreshing to hear that you bring them in, educate them so that you're on the same side of the table um, um, figuratively and just go on, here's how we can get you where you said you wanted to be in retirement. And and um, it's, it's just, it kind of reminds me too of like uh, um, in music, you know, there's all the same notes, but boy, one composer can make a, a song sound whole different than another composer. So yeah, it's, it's just yeah. how you're, how you're bringing things together. Exactly. Yep. So um, right. what I would say is what is, what is some of the thing when you're talking about uh, your clients and some of the problems that they're facing, um, you know, yes, the end result is, boy, this has been so clear and and whatnot. Can you think of a uh, maybe a generic uh, example or case study of client that came in, they thought one thing, you showed them the ease planning process, and then when you laid it out, they were able to accomplish something that they didn't know that they were even going to be able to accomplish in retirement? Well, uh, actually, that happens, uh, you know, all the time that w- we get mm-hmm. that reaction. You know, some of them are more dramatic than others. Uh, because the the kind of the more confused they are when they when they first start, the more dramatic that aha moment is for them. Yeah, because they feel hopeless coming in. They do, and they're they're like, you know, this is just going to be another. Many of them, you know, have a planner or they've talked to planners. They've been around to 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 question, you know, it, you know, getting getting advice from a number of different people in the industry, and they just come out even more confused. So. Yeah. That what what you described happens to us with with every client to it to a certain degree, wow. and it like I said the the more confused and sometimes jaded they are yeah and they've been burned a few times and they're they're really skeptical when they start and at at the point when the, at the point when they realize that this is real and they're not, they're finally getting what they wanted which was accurate honest information because. You know, they'll say to us things like, you know, this is what I've always wanted. I didn't know it was available. Yep. Yep. I didn't know what to call it, 
but it just seemed like this should have been, you yeah, know, the process and finally doing it this way. Yep. Yep. You know, kudos to them, you, these clients you're mentioning, these types of clients, kudos to them because um, human nature is when you get confused to a certain point, you sh- shut down, lock up and don't do anything. So it's like, oh, if right. do you want choice A or B, they choose A or B. But if it's, do you want A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, people go, mm, I do nothing. So kudos to them for continuing in their search to make sure they're taking care of their family properly. They get to you. They see clarity with the ease planning process. It resonates with them. The The scales fall off their eyes. They see clearly and and they're making decisions alongside with you that resonate well and, and uh, um, set well with them. So I think that's a really big realization too, that people didn't shut down. They kept on until it, it, they finally got something that makes sense for them. Yeah. And it's because it's their plan. They, yep. they, I just guided them. I just, I just gave them honest truth about how the different things work. And they ask their questions and they put their plan together. And I just, I just analyze it for them and give them the truth back and say, yeah, you know, I, wow. I, I, I crunch numbers and say, Hey, you know what? Your plan actually works. And, and yeah. it, what we're really known for is people will come to us and go, you know, we don't think we have enough money to retire, but we're really sick of working and we'd like to retire. And we take what they're having their head about their plan. You said it earlier, kind of their gut feeling about what they want in retirement. And we analyze it from a financial standpoint and many times come back and go, you know what? You can retire just the way you described it to me and you can do it today. Wow. And you talk about a payoff in somebody's business. Yeah. You know, for me, they walk is, out with a little bit of spring in their step at that point. Oh, <laughs> you, should see, you should see the expressions. Yeah. Wow. So that, that's the fun part. I mean, that's the true payoff. You know, we, 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 we do very well financially, of course, and we do a lot of work for free. We do a lot of give back to the community. Um, but the, you know, the big payoff is that expression you get when you really change somebody's life. Yeah. One family at a time. And you're, you are confirming each one of those stories is confirming what we started off the conversation with is you got into the business to make sure that people are getting the best advice so that what happened to your dad doesn't happen to the next person and the next person and the next. So I think that is just spectacular, Dan. We, we came full circle. That was awesome. What's the best way someone that is interested in learning more about what you do and how you do it, how can they reach out and connect with you? Well, my, uh, my website is difficult to sound out, you know, Zexus private wealth is, is, is difficult, but our phone number is 888-593-9475, or they can Google Dan Brooks, Lake Mary, Florida, and I'll pop up on their, uh, their, their computer. Excellent. And I'll make sure to have the uh, website in the show notes so people can click on that as well. Dan, thank Perfect. you so much for coming on. It's been a real pleasure talking with you today. You as well, Mike. Thanks. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.